Okay, this video is intended for people who don't need professional studio quality prints, but they do want what comes out of their printer to match what's on their screen roughly without spending hundreds of dollars on screen calibration devices and all that kind of stuff. So I use a free photo editing software called GIMP, so let's open that up. Now what happens nowadays is the computer screens we use are so bright because of the LEDs lighting up the image we see, that when you send it to a printer it comes out way darker than you expected. Now this can also be the case if you send out your photo to get printed, and it hasn't been calibrated, they might ship you back a picture that looks way darker than you expected, and now you're at a decent amount of money. So when I got my new printer I did a bunch of test prints on GIMP, doing little edits here and there, and this is what I found to be the best results as far as matching what's on my screen to what comes out of my printer. Now for your specific photo printer you might have to do a couple tweaks to this, but these are the generic filter settings I apply to all of my pictures before printing. So we'll drag our photo into GIMP, and you can see at the toolbar at the top there's a colors subsection. So we'll click colors, go to hue saturation. Now saturation is just color intensity, so I upped the master saturation up to 5. Now all this is doing is making my overall photo look more vivid. So blues are going to look more blue, greens are going to look more green. So if you're trying to get really blue water or really green trees, but you're finding skin tones are looking a little too red, you can click the red tab here, and you can turn down the saturation to compensate for that. So you'll still get really saturated magentas, blues, cyan, all that, but the red is going to tweak back down to normal. So back to what I do, I click master, I put the saturation at 5, you can save this preset by clicking the plus above, naming it whatever you want, hit OK. So the next time you go back to it, you can click presets up top, and then choose that, and it'll automatically set your saturation for every picture you do. Hit OK. So the second and final thing I do is I go back to colors, and this time I choose brightness and contrast. Now brightness just changes how light or dark the photo is, and this goes back to what I was saying before, how your photo is probably going to print darker than you intended. So all we're going to do is compensate for that by raising the brightness. It's going to look a little weird on your screen, but it's going to look nice when you print it out. Now contrast is good for changing the tone of your photo. More contrast means darker blacks and brighter whites. Now you can lower contrast if your photos are being printed with no detail in really bright or dark areas, but you can increase it if the picture looks washed out or too soft and you want a sharper colored picture. So the generic values I apply to make what comes out of my printer look like what's on my screen is I just adjust brightness to 12 and contrast to 10. Once again you can click the plus and save this preset so you don't have to manually adjust the bars every time. Now if you don't like what's on your screen to begin with, you can apply separate edits beforehand until the picture looks just right to you, and then you can apply these generic presets afterwards so that it comes out of the printer looking the way you want it to. Now I should mention when you do your test prints on regular plain paper, it's never going to look as good as it does on your screen. You have to use photo paper. So you can use plain regular paper to get a general idea of the colors and what it's going to look like, but then at the end if you want a really great result you're going to have to use photo paper. If you want a very vivid, punchy, bright picture, I'd recommend going with glossy photo paper. The only downside I've found to glossy photo paper is it does produce a little bit more glare than matte photo paper. Now matte photo paper is going to show less glare and it's going to show more texture in the picture, but the colors aren't going to be as vivid. So you can make your choice depending on what you prefer, or what kind of shot you're taking. It's also important to note if you're worried about wasting ink doing test prints, if you don't use your printer, it's wasted ink anyways. It's going to dry up, it's going to clog your nozzles, and you're just going to have to run cleaning cycles on your printer. So you're better to have fun with it and experiment while you can. It's not really going to cost you anything else. So the big question is, is this going to give you studio level quality? No. But if you're like me and you're just getting into photo printing, and it's not worth a couple hundred dollars to find out if you like it, but it might be worth a hundred for a new printer, then I think this is a good software to use for you instead of investing in Photoshop, recalibrating your screen, buying certain lights for your editing room, and all that. Now one final very important point. Make sure to set your printing drivers according to the paper that you're loading in your printer. So if you're using glossy photo paper, tell it that you're using glossy photo paper. You get this option when you install your printer drivers so that your computer recognizes the printer. When you open up your photo and you do control P for printing, make sure you go into more settings, set your paper type, set your quality, and that's going to make a big difference as far as the quality of your print. Okay, so now we've applied our generic filter presets. So now you're going to go to file export as. The bottom left you can see it says select file type. So just click anywhere here, hit J. I find JPEG works just fine. It's still a high quality image but a small file size. 
Now you can name it to whatever you want. Click export. Now by default, if you go into advanced options, you're going to see it's ticked use quality settings from original image. You can do that, that's just fine. I tend to drag it up to 100%. In subsampling, I choose best quality. Hit export. Now open up your new photo and print.